What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Duels of the Roses. So it's been a while since last time, but since last time we defeated uh, Necromancer and I actually had to go back and re-record the fights against Rex and Weevil so you see I have two victories against him instead of one. Uh, we're moving on now. As I've said before, the uh, Red Rose campaign is non-linear, so we can actually go any route we choose to at this point. Um, going up against Pegasus or Bandit Keith would unlock other opponents, respectively. But um, Darkness Ruler over here is over here by himself, and he won't actually unlock any He's other. All alone. <laughs> He's all alone in the darkness. The darkness. So if we fight, he's not going to unlock any other opponents when we defeat him. So we might as well go out of our way and take him out right now. He's actually the weakest out of the three as well. So I've taken the liberty of modifying the deck just a little bit. Oh god. The word ruler just gives me dragon ruler flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> thought ruler. The, the thought ruler. <laughs> thought, thought <laughs> For those of you who played the TCG, you know what I'm talking about. So, obviously, because he's the darkness ruler, he rules over the darkness, which is entirely what this field is made out of. So, to save myself the trouble of having two or not to terraform the land, I have added two powerful dark monsters in the deck. Um, he's gonna just chill over here until I have a need for him. He's gonna hide in the, he's gonna hide in the woods. <laughs> hide <laughs> until, shadows. Yeah, he's hiding in the woods. Like, um, so his deck leader is a colonel, it's King of Yami Makai, which I always thought was a really cool monster. Um, it has weird defense, it has 1530 defense, which there's a couple of cards that were that came out in the second set, that came out in, in, uh, in Metal Raiders, that uh, were like that. And they eventually just kind of stopped doing those weird arbitrary amounts because um, it just it messes up the game. <laughs> and even like having a card with like say 1850 attacks still kind of messes up the game. So they don't really do that as much anymore either. But to me at least that's still a little bit more feasible than okay seriously with this hand. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I seriously almost want to go power up Act and just go swing in. But I, I maybe I need oh, him to. He has, like, he has too many traps. Yeah. The, the thing about. Um, about Darkest Ruler is he does have some powerful monsters and he has terrain advantage for days, but his biggest strength is actually his traps. He has some pretty nasty traps, including, um, I'm pretty sure he has Tears of the Mermaid and Invisible Wire, which I've uh, added both of those to my deck as well. He's preserving his monsters by moving them back, which is pretty interesting. Okay, I think I can make Judge Man. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. I don't want to put any power-ups on him, I'm sure I can make him. There we go. Alright, maybe I'll put some power-ups on him, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep, uh, I'm gonna keep Tears of the Mermaid close to Axe Rigger to bait out whatever he is, and um, if it's a trap that decreases the attack of something and spellbinds it, then that gives me an opportunity to actually deal some battle damage to him. If it just straight-up kills whatever it is, then that really just kind of it inconveniences me because it just drags out the duel longer and I can't deal as much battle damage to him. Obviously in the real game you'd rather just, you would you would rather deal with the threats on the field and then uh, swing at your opponent because of his invisible line. Attack that thing! Uh, it still has 2,000. I wonder how it adds so much. Uh, unless he increases the same type, no. He does yeah. increase the strength for the same type friendlies. That's actually terrifying. <laughs> Um, I definitely want to do something about that. I can still, I can still hurt, hurt him pretty bad if I run him over with uh, uh, Empress Judge powered up. I should go ahead and put the. Um, he'll still be spellbound for a turn, so uh, let me go ahead and see. I actually remember to put my phone on silent this time <laughs> and not throw it at the wall. And maybe he'll, maybe he'll get dumb and swing at this thing with something else, and then I'll deal some more damage to him that way. So. We'll see how it goes. He may actually run into Axe Raider right now, too. That's a possibility, but I'll, I'll, I'll take the damage if I can bait out whatever it is that he has. Um, his most powerful monsters are Zoa, and he also has Zero the Mant. Um, it's a ritual monster. Alright, he did exactly what I hoped he would do. He ran into it with something weaker. So, I think he has enough distance away from that King of Yami Makai that he summoned to where it didn't get the same type attack bonus. Um, so, that's nice. Alright, let's, let's establish uh, Command Knight. Uh, I'd like to do more damage, but ooh! Oh, okay! Yeah, <laughs> you'll be fine. Be I just want to wait. Once you wait until you get Emperor's Touch up, then you use. That's bad. Yeah. Um, Act Raider's still doing okay over here. I'm actually kind of leaving myself exposed, but mm, nothing really to worry about. He's actually been depleted pretty hard, so. Okay, we got some good traps if we need them. We're, we're pretty set. Again, the only other thing is movement that we have a disadvantage of right now. He's, I don't know where he's moving his deck leader to. He usually doesn't do this. Okay, that could be bad. 
he always do. He always do. Yeah, he, he's just... I never, admittedly never fought this guy a whole lot, but... The um, thing about Zero the Mant is... Um, it requires King... Oh, yeah, he's screwed now. Uh, it requires King Yami Makai as a monster to be tributed for the summon. The rest of them are fiend-type monsters. And I think they're actually, like, fiend-type monsters with, like, a thousand or less or attack or something like that. So you can actually use Karibos, is what I usually did um, with my fiend deck. Or darkness deck, rather. And, um, that was pretty good. Uh, not sure if Trap. Yeah, um, he's he's pretty screwed now. So, yeah, he he needs multiple Kami Makai's, but let's just face it, ritual summoning in this game is incredibly inconvenient, and it's it's such a waste uh, when you can. It's, it's it requires it's faster and requires much less card um, consumption. I was gonna say you know card advantage, but to in order to um, to just use a power up on something that already has a high base attack than to sit there and, um, let's see, okay, we're good for now, um, I removed Tactic Warrior already, okay, uh, then, then the Ritual Summoning, at least it's better than it was in, okay, <laughs> at least it's better than it was in Forbidden Memories, because in Forbidden Memories, you ha could only play one card per turn, and you couldn't, um, you know, you were right in front of your opponent on the board, like, in a, in a practical duel. I mean, they should have just made it, like, a proper Yu-Gi-Oh! simulator. Let me see if I can run this over, like, if it's a trap or, or a spot or something. Yep. Aha! That was a good play. <laughs> that would have... I have whatever's behind him is no check, either. That's true. Um, so we'll, maybe we'll send an Emperor's Judge first. No, we can't hit him yet. Hmm. Curse Breaker is spellbound, the irony of that. Um, but he's powerful enough now. That would have been an OT. Actually, no, would because he's all that. Yeah, that's that's our that's our game. game. Not bad at all. Um, but yeah, ritual summoning in Forbidden Memories was just terrible because there was no judgment has been promoted. 